Thank you, Scott. We have one more project to talk about today, uh, and that's terrain generation. Uh, now, we all know, and many of you, in fact, uh, have been working on terrain tools for your studio for a long time. Um, it's been happening for decades, and decades, and we've helped uh, many of you uh, achieve that uh, that result. Um, I remember some years ago I was in LA, and every studio I visited said, um, "How about terrains, Kristen?" So uh, mo more recently, their voice has been amplified by the needs of uh, game studios, and there goes even greater scalability, even bigger need for something procedural. So. For, uh, for Houdini 16, we decided to tap into all that knowledge that we built uh, helping people out, like I said, over, over decades. And we zeroed in on terrain generation as, as an actual architecture to put together with, um, with tools um, uh, designed on top of it, of, of course. So uh, us being who we are, um, we decided to take a different approach than the, the standard or, or typical one of using image compositing for height fields. We, we actually um, thought of staying in SOPs, doing everything in SOPs, uh, and using our volume uh, capabilities in SOPs. Uh, these are not, that's not open B2B guys. These are our, our own uh, uh, volume data types that we've had around for, for some time. Um, but these are 2D volumes, slices, so two, two and a half D volumes. They're extremely fast, so don't think slow. Plus, even our volume data types um, are not exactly dense as, as people think. There's, there's a lot of partial um, sparseness to them as well. Anyway, so we're basically doing it all in, in, in SOPs. We're compositing SOPs, layering, layering uh, uh, all these operations to generate terrain using noise and all kinds of tools. All of this uh, is not only procedural, it's art directable. And again, the whole idea of no black box, same thing that you saw with, with Oceans just now and earlier from Kai on grooming. So that openness and flexibility and usability all come together and gel into a very powerful architecture. And then uh, there's more. <laughs> um, I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll see all the details from Scott. But um, very important to mention uh, at the end of this is uh, the fact that inputs and outputs that are needed by, by game studios and, and film studios as well and, and others um, was something that we need to focus on. So we support all kinds of LiDAR uh, formats to go in, and we can output um, geometry and, and native formats into game engines and, uh, and, and other apps as well. And rendering is uh, pretty fast with Mantra, but you can always generate the, um, the geometry, the, the surface, and render in every other package. And talking about that, the other advantage to doing this all in SOPs is that you have immediate access to, to in the entire arsenal of modeling tools in Houdini, because this is all SOPs. So if you've built your height fields, then you can add all the concavities you need, build all the caves and, and rocks and, and, and all those shards that you need very easily in the same context. Anyway, enough talk. Uh, let's take a look. Thank you. Um, so this is truly brand new. We've never had these tools before in Houdini. Um, so we're actually going to spend some time in Houdini taking a look at how you actually would work with these tools as sort of a more proper introduction rather than the very high level stuff. So let's take a look here. So first of all, we're starting with a height field. Um, you can see I'm using some of the radial menus there just to get started. But essentially what we're doing is we're creating some noise and we're deforming this, uh, this patch of volume. And basically we're displaying it as a displaced surface, but it's really these 2D volumes that Kristen was talking about. But you can see here that really we are truly compositing these. We're building layers of noises. We're adding them together in interesting ways. Um, and then we just kind of start blending them. And we can do that much like I did with the oceans by drawing one of these masks. And what this allows you to do is, again, much like compositing, um, blend these together to create different types of effects. So we've isolated a specific patch of noise we want to do. In this case, we're doing a maximum between the two to create this sort of little um, hill in the middle. And so really the idea is that you just work with these pieces, you combine them in interesting ways. So here's an example where I've just used this uh, uh, whirly noise, this kind of cellular noise, and I'm just going to isolate out something that looks like a, uh, a sort of a mountain peak. So you can see I just found an interesting piece. I'm just going to blend that out to nothing. 
And then using tools that you're already familiar with, things like transform SOPs, things that you know from SOPs from other contexts, I can just place that mountain range anywhere that I want. So again, we're giving you the procedural powerful tools to create the noises, do the distortions to make it look organic. But of course, you always want to arc direct these things, right? You don't want everything controlled for you. So we can let you put down a mountain, copy it, move another one around, place it exactly where the director asked for, exactly where uh, you need it for your particular shot. And again, completely procedural from start to finish. So completely art directable, but also changeable uh, up to the last second. And so here's just the, uh, the result that we get um, just from those handful of operations. And you can already see, you know, this is starting to look like a, a fairly believable um, landscape. In fact, you know, put that in a far uh, background, you could probably get away with just doing this. But of course, we don't want to stop with just like a couple of noise tools and a couple of deformers. We want to add tools specifically for terrain. So here now we're going to talk about some tools that we've built, things like this uh, uh, terracing uh, node. And this again allows you to create the types of things you see on actual terrains when the uh, layers of strata sort of break apart. And again, mask out an area. You can see how interactive this is, partially due to how we're using OpenCL to make this very fast in the viewport. Here we're just clipping off some of these mountains to create more of a desert sort of mesa effect. And then we also have this way of creating patterns, things like these star shapes, these weird zigzags. And you're probably looking at it and go like, I don't see how this matches a terrain. Like these are very odd shapes, non-organic at all. If we combine them together, we get this odd sort of stair step, which makes some sense maybe, but not really. Um, so, you know, of course you want to distort that then. You create sort of mesa creation. And again, just to give you an overview of what this looks like now, uh, just in the viewport here, um, of uh, how much detail we can get into it. And that's another important thing, is that because this is all procedural from start to finish, you can actually work at low res, you know, work at 60 frames per second in your viewport, and then when you're happy with the result, just change your input to be a very high resolution height field, and now you get a very high resolution detailed result. And so Kristen was saying, like, you know, we wanted to bring this all into SOPs, but, but really, if all we're talking about is compositing, like why bother? But this is why. You can take in something like this beautiful piece of geometry that we have um, and bring that right in to a height field. So you can use SOPs, you can use modeling SOPs, you can use geometry as inputs to height fields. And then continue to work on them as if they were always height fields. So add noise just to this sort of pig head. Blur the edges, make it look more organic. And so now you can really like sculpt right down to exactly the shape you want. It's completely art directable. Um, but the reality is we haven't abandoned actual compositing either. So here we are in the terrain desktop. So I've opened up the compositing window. I'm going to put down a node where I can call a node from compositing and use it inside my height field. So here now you can see this sort of pentagon shape being extruded in the height field. I can change the, the number of sides and it updates the height field at the same time. And then I can use it to sort of cut a hole into our landscape here. And then as I, as I work inside of COPS, inside of compositing, I can do blurs, I can do compositing effects, and have them update live inside the terrain tools. So really all of this is about taking all of the tools that you're familiar with and sort of integrating them together so that as you learn one part of the software, you're already learning another part. And you're pulling it all together to create effects that aren't possible if we isolated these into their own sort of black box architectures. And just to really drive that home, um, let's take a look at how we can take this landscape now, and instead of doing the operations that we did before, let's take a, a, an input from outside that you really wouldn't expect to be part of a landscape. So here we have the ocean tools that I showed you earlier. Here's the ocean evaluate, the exact network I had before. But the interesting thing is, is that we can output a height field from an ocean. So now this is a height field, it's a 2D volume. And that means I can do height field operations on it, like create these distortions. Um, I can add noise. So I can actually use ocean tools, things that have nothing to do with landscapes, to create really interesting looking landscapes, things like desert dunes, things that are difficult to do, uh, and getting these really awesome natural looking rippling effects that tie directly into the ocean tool set. And then of course, if you want to, you can convert the height field into geometry. You could run a Boolean operation on it. So again, we're, we want to be able to go from one context to another seamlessly, as if there's no difference between these tools. And in fact, really, there, there is no difference between these tools other than the specific piece of data that they operate on. 
And just to end off here, since I'm talking about converting things into geometry and using oceans and so on, uh, I want to point out that we can also um, run simulations on these tools. Right? So let's start first by taking a look at some examples that come with the shelf tools. We have something we call terrain effects, where we're really just examples of different types of terrains to get you started, figure out how the tools work. You know, we have a mountain, a valley, and so on. But really, to make this look truly believable, you want to run a simulation over it. And so in that case, we have a new type of simulation that simulates erosion on height fields. And so basically, you can take those sort of very interesting looking but not super realistic terrains and run a simulation to discover where does the water go, when it flows over the surface, where does it collect, how does it pull debris from one part of the terrain to the other to create valleys and so on. And again, this is very fast, all running on OpenCL, and so it allows you to experiment, to iterate, and create lots of different types of landscapes very, very quickly. And of course, like all other parts of Houdini simulation tools, you can get interesting data out of it, right? We're not just giving it this black box. So I can find the flow, like where have things moved? How quickly have they moved there? Um, where is the water? How does it collect in certain areas? And then you can take those uh, different layers and build a shader from them. So this is actually a viewport rendering of the landscape um, with various texture maps and shaders applied to give it this mountainous look. But we also have a terrain shader that basically is the equivalent of the viewport, allowing you to take any of these layers, bring them into your uh, shader, and build a custom landscape um, using those. And of course, you know, Houdini is known for effects, so the, the, the background that you see here that these, the crowd agents and the RBDs are traveling across, that's a, a height field object. And what I mean by that is that we haven't converted it into something else. It's natively a height field inside of DOPS. So you can create your landscape and use it as a collision simulation directly. Oops. Uh, this video appears to, be <laughs> appears to be messed up, but imagine an, an incredible looking avalanche. <laughs> Just like... Unbelievable. Uh, it's in there. We're in the process of keying it out. That's why, that's why it looks like this. <laughs> uh, but trust me, it runs over the landscape. It collides with the height field. It looks great. Um, and so just to end off, especially because Kristen was talking about exporting it to different places, here we have a Houdini-generated landscape inside of Unreal. So the important aspect here is that all of the data that we're creating can be exported in a very uh, game engine-friendly way. Um, we can also have tools for breaking it up into tiles, so you can work on enormous terrains, slice them up into smaller tiles, and work on each one individually. Um, and of course, all of the tools that you would expect from SOPS to work with landscapes like scatter and so on for placing your vegetation work as well. So I just wanted to end off here with this really um, awesome result uh, uh, using Unreal Engine and our terrains. And I hope you guys really dig in and play around with these tools, because they're all new, but they're a lot of fun, and you get really great results very quickly. Um, so that's terrains, and thank you very much. <laughs>